Hey guys, it's Travis with BPNorthwest.com. One of the most common phone calls and questions we get up here at BP is, what kind of oil should I be running in my car? Well, that's a great question. Uh, so today we decided to put a video together talking about oil, oil filters, oil additives, and at the end of the video, if you don't know how to change your oil, we're going to show you how to do that too. The first thing is weight. What weight of oil should you put in your car? Uh, the latest one out right now is uh, 0W20. Uh, you have 1030, 1040, SAE30, uh, 2050. What does it all mean? Well, the numbers actually tell you the thickness of the oil uh, when it's cold and when it's hot. So the thickness of a 1040 is, is 10, and then the 40 means as it gets warmer, it gets a little bit thinner. Um, Personally, what I run in my British car is 1040 because these British cars run at higher RPMs and so you want it to get a little bit thinner and kind of splash around in there. Uh, the other question is, what type of oil should I use? Regular oil, partial synthetic, full synthetic? Well, up to a couple of years ago, I used to run full synthetic in my car and uh, I quit doing it. One of the big reasons is, as you can see right here on the front of this bottle, it says uh, it cleans out up to 46% of sludge after the first oil change. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, it is and it isn't. One of the nightmares of this is, is there are so many detergents in here that if you're putting any additives in your, uh, in your oil when you do an oil change, this full synthetic is going to wash it out. So it's going to, you're going to start seeing it if you ever drop the oil pan. You're going to see some sludge down there because it's all taking all these additives out. The other thing is with new motor oils, they're taking the zinc out. Well, way back when, uh, up to a couple of years ago, they used to put zinc in all of oil. And um, the reason that they did that is because the zinc additive works as a real good anti-wear additive. So now, that's gone as well, and these cars really need it. Your brand new cars, they don't, but your old British car does. So here's the first thing I did, is I, I just wanted to show you guys kind of what some of these oils look like. Now this is an old uh, can from the 50s that I opened up just to kind of give a good comparison to. Um, this is a, a standard 1040, this is an SAE30, this is a Brad Penn oil, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, and this is a full synthetic. Now, I want you to get a pretty good peek at these things, so I'm going to throw a little white background behind it. Now, right off the bat, you're probably going to notice that, uh, that this old-fashioned oil is a lot darker uh, than the rest of these, with the exception of the pen. Um, and that's just because it wasn't as well refined uh, as a lot of these other oils. This is your regular 1040 motor oil. This is a partial synthetic. 1030, this is a Brad Penn 1040, and this is a full synthetic 5W30. Now when it comes to the kind of oil that I run in my car and everybody in the shop runs in their car, we all run this Brad Penn oil. It's kind of made in an old fashioned way. It's got the zinc in it, it doesn't have all the high detergents in there, so even if you do decide to add additives to it, which you don't have to, um, it's going to perform the best in your British car. Uh, we never carried motor oil up here for the longest time just because, um, you know, you could get it pretty much anywhere. We just started carrying this Brad Penn oil just because it's pretty difficult to find. It's a little bit more expensive than all these other oils, but it's well worth the money. Uh, just because you're probably going to save a lot of money on additives that you don't have to do anymore. Uh, for example, I don't run ZDDP in my car anymore. Uh, it's pretty expensive, and again, a zinc additive, and the zinc's already in this oil. So that's the difference between all these oils here. The next thing we're going to talk to you about is uh, we're going to talk to you about these oil additives. Now, one thing that I always ran in my car was Marvel Mystery Oil, and I still do. I put a couple of ounces in. It's a real good um, uh, oil that just kind of helps lubricate and uh, anti-wear stuff. You know, you have six slick 50. This stuff's so expensive. Uh, I ran it in my car for a little while, and I just didn't see the difference. Uh, you know, you have uh, engine restore, 
sea foam. Well, this is actually a pretty good um, oil additive. And then you know you have all these gimmicks out there. This rear main seal repair. Uh, I've seen this stuff everywhere, and you know what? I've never had any luck with it. So I don't add that. I don't use Sick Slick 50. I used to use this, a real good additive, but ZDP, I don't need it anymore because I'm using the Brad Penn oil. Uh, for the most part, I don't put any additives in other than Marble Mystery Oil just because it's real inexpensive and it does work as a nice lubricant. The last thing we're going to talk about here are oil filters. Now, there's so many brands of oil filters out there. Uh, which one do you choose? Well, personally, I go with Wix. Wix, it's a little bit more expensive than the cheapies that you'll find at Walmart and wherever else, um, but it's, again, it's well worth the money. So, uh, you have three options for oil filters, depending on what type of car you have. Now, I've got a Spitfire, uh, and, you know, this, uh, actually, that oil filter and this oil filter are the same. One's just larger than the other one. If you have an old style filter still on yours, if it's a late 60s, um, you're going to need uh, uh, this bigger one here, which has a, an adapter that's going to fit into your, uh, into your uh, block uh, so it can fit these newer type oil filters. All right, guys, now we're going to show you how to change the oil, and this is so easy to do. The first thing you're going to want to do is identify your motor and figure out how much oil you're going to need to replenish uh, at the end. So grab a manual. I just use this Haynes manual. I think it's the easiest thing to do. And about five or six pages in, you're going to see general dimensions, weights, and capacities. And believe it or not, there's actually an English to American dictionary, uh, which is, is pretty handy as well. So under capacities, uh, you have engine sum which is oil pan, uh, with filter change, and you need eight imperial pints. Translated to American is 9.6 US pints, or four and a half liters. Well, so much for English to American. Basically though, four and a half liters, one liter is not quite um, a uh, quart. One quart of oil is about 0.95 liters. So if you need four and a half liters, you're going to need about four and a quarter quarts of oil. So a couple other things you're going to need. You need something to catch the old oil in. You're going to need either a 7 16 box end wrench or just a crescent wrench. Uh, you need an oil filter wrench or what I use. I've just got this big pair of uh, channel locks. You're going to need your oil filter. And then I like to use motor flush. Um, this is something that you're going to pour into your crankcase when it's cold, start your car and idle it for about five minutes with this in there. Don't drive your car with this stuff in there, just let it idle. Uh, and in five minutes, shut your car off and then drain the oil. So one other thing you're going to notice is my car is uh, up on blocks. You don't need to put your car on blocks to change the oil unless you're going to get a, tr a bunch of lights and camera equipment underneath then you're going to need the room. So let's go over to the car. We're going to pop open the hood and uh, we're going to dump the motor flush in. Now that your car's warmed up, you've shut it off, it's time to uh, get underneath and start draining the oil. First thing you're going to want to do is grab your oil pan, slide it into place. Now it's easier to get to this behind the driver's side tire because the drain is actually on the side of the oil pan. So now grab your 7 16 uh, wrench or your, uh, your crescent wrench, get up on that and start taking it off. Now if it's real tight, you may want to get that crescent wrench on there because it's going to give you a lot more leverage. Now remember this oil, once it gets loose, this oil is going to come out. It's going to be really warm. So just keep a little bit of forward pressure on that until it feels like it's about ready to come off. It's starting to drip and then get out of the way. 
Now your oil filter is still on the driver's side and it sits right here, right below this alternator. Now you're going to want to get in and try and get as close to the base as you can uh, when you're trying to remove this. Now it shouldn't be on there super tight, but you never know who put it on last. They may have done it super tight. So like I said, grab it toward the base because it's a lot stronger there and this thing can and probably will crumple. Once it's loose, that thing's going to come off by hand and it's going to start dripping oil. That's another reason why you want to leave your pan down underneath there. Go ahead and grab a paper towel now. Wipe up around this metal edge right here real good. We want that nice and clean so it's going to make a nice seal. Now, you always hear them say you need to change your month your oil every three months or 3,000 miles. Well, basically a good rule of thumb on these cars, you need to change it every spring uh, and then every fall. So, uh, reason being, you don't want to leave my car. It could take me a couple of years to run 3,000 miles on it. So you don't want to leave that same oil in there. You're going to want to change it at least once, if not twice a year. The next thing you want to do, go ahead and open up uh, one of your uh, quarts of oil. You're going to want to put a little bit inside. Now right here you see where this is where the threads are. Try and pour just a little bit, it doesn't have to be a ton. Try and pour a little bit in there and you're going to spill. It's going to go a little bit all over the place. Okay. Now, you'll see I've got a little bit of oil in here. I dip my finger in that and I go right around this edge. Uh, it's kind of almost a, a, like a real hard rubber type edge. And then I uh, like to get it nice and wet so when I put it on, it's going to also help make a really good seal. Now we're going to go back to the car and we're going to put this thing on. Okay, now that you've got this on, get it to where it's snug and then turn it with your wrench about an eighth of a turn. That's it. You don't want to put this thing on real tight or it's going to be a nightmare to get off. So now it's on. Well, looks like our oil's done dripping, so let's go ahead and grab our plug. Grab a paper towel, we'll clean it up a little bit. Also, check and make sure you don't see any metal shavings on this. Um, my plug I replaced with a magnetic one, so it's going to pull anything metal out of that engine. Um, and this is something I definitely recommend you do, just because uh, you know it's going to tell you if there's anything wrong inside that car. Let's go ahead and clean this up, we'll wipe it down, we're going to screw it in and put it back on nice and snug. Let's go ahead and throw our four and a quarter quarts in here. Now we're going to want to let all this oil settle so we get an accurate reading. So let it sit for about, oh, three, four minutes, something like that. Pull out your dipstick, which is over here on the passenger side, down below the uh, uh, manifold here. Pull it out, wipe it clean, dip it back in, and then pull it out and get a reading. Wipe it clean again, then dip it, and then read it again so we uh, make sure we get an accurate reading. Then we can adjust from there. If you need a little bit more oil, go ahead and dump it in and repeat the process. Well, that's how you change the oil on your British car. As always, if you run into any snags along the way, give us a call at 503-864-2001. Also, you can hop on our Facebook page. We're kind of using that as a forum now, uh, which is at facebook.com slash bpnorthwest. And, uh, 
post your pictures, comments, questions on there. And also, if you have any projects coming up that you'd like to see us get down on film, you can drop us a line through our email at howto at bpnorthwest.com. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy the ride. Mm -hmm.